welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello! So glad you're here. Feel free to subscribe and stick around. So today I'm bringing you guys episode two of Buzzed In. It's this little apartment series of sorts that I'm doing on my channel because I feel like people are always asking where should I live in New York? What are the neighborhoods like? What are they known for? I feel like a lot of my friends kind of are scattered all over New York City. So a few of them have offered to let me into their apartments to show you guys around, as well as talk a little bit about their neighborhood, how they decorate. Obviously gonna be super COVID safe, making sure we're negative. Just got my test back yesterday. I'm in the clear. So today I'm super excited because we're gonna be heading to the West Village to go see my good friend Peter. He lives on the edge of Greenwich in the West Village here in Lower Manhattan. Before we head on over, I figured I'd tell you guys just a smidge of history in the West Village from the last few decades. I feel like it's kind of this culturally iconic neighborhood. It's now kind of known to New York locals as like being really nice, upscale, bougie with a lot of history and really beautiful streets and ambiance and atmosphere. I personally am a sucker for the West Village. I love to hang out there. It's so cute. And it also has this incredibly rich history in terms of the LGBTQ community and its musical past. Though Stonewall Inn can be found on Christopher Street, which is a place where the Stonewall riots or rebellion occurred back in 1969. Members of this community resisted a routine police raid on the Stonewall Inn. And the riots that happened there are widely considered to be the single most important event leading to the modern LGBTQ rights movement in the United States. The West Village area is also historically known as an important landmark on the map of American bohemian culture. It was really a focal point of new movements and ideas, whether political, artistic, or cultural. The beat generation of the 1950s focused a lot of their energy here. A lot of writers, poets, and artists and students lived there. The village too also played a major role in the development of the folk music scene of the 1960s. A lot of really incredible like writers and artists and musicians lived here and a lot of their work really stemmed from this location. So enough talk from me. We're gonna head on over to Peter's. He's gonna show us his apartment and talk a little bit about the West Village. Hi. Hi, my name's Peter. Welcome to my apartment. Hi, I'm Peter. I work as an analyst at a fintech startup, um, and I'm paying $29.50 for my apartment in the West Village. Yeah, so this is my main living space, and it's kind of like a mismatch of things that either I've purchased myself, or have taken from previous places that I've lived, or stuff from like my parents' basement. I don't have like the most cohesive interior style, but I think it works. It's like, you know, just like a mix of different things, and it's kind of cozy. That's one good thing about a small space. And I got these ones, I thought they were kind of cool because in certain lighting, not like the light will reflect off of them and kind of like make the space seem a little cooler. I really like them and I hung them myself, which was like pretty, I'm you so know, proud. Pretty, pretty big for me. <laughs> Let's start with the jaws because they're pretty intense. So these jaws, my dad actually caught them in the 80s. Basically, they were in my basement for like a decade, um, kind of doing nothing. And I was like, oh, that could be really cool here. So I decided to hang them up, definitely like make the space feel like slightly more masculine compared to like some of the other pieces I have in here. So something that I have like all over my apartment are these reserve signs. They're basically like thrifted from all my nights out. Um, Cause that a lot of times like you'll have one at a table or something like that and you can just kind of pick them off. I don't recommend you do it that often, but um, they do make cute little like accessories and they remind me of fun times before we couldn't do that. <laughs> this one's actually from Top of the Standard. I stole, I, I borrowed it uh, <laughs> last year um, on my birthday actually, so I figured it was a valid purpose. So this is kind of like the bar section of the room. I got this guy, it was actually like my grandparents and it's like this old Korean chest and I kind of just like repurposed it as a bar. Obviously it's not the most functional thing, but I think it's like a really cool statement piece. So I really like having it here. Another reserve sign. Um, this one's actually from my favorite place called Paul's at the Roxy. I just have some like framed pictures of me and my friends and my family and then some flowers. If you notice, I don't have a lot of live plants in my apartment because I'm notoriously bad at taking care of them. So this is the kitchen. It's kind of like an extension of the living room. 
It's kind of small, but I'm not the biggest chef, so that works for me. Um, and honestly, for me, I was more interested in like finishes and that kind of stuff. So like, love my appliances. We got a dishwasher, which is great. And then like a couple cute like little pots on here for pops of color. Yeah, it actually has surprisingly good storage because the cabinets are so tall. So these are like some cute little bookend things that I took from my grandparents that they got on some trip. Books that I'm in the process of reading slash like will never touch. This is the bathroom and honestly was one of the major like selling points of the apartment because we have a washer and dryer which is very difficult to come by. A true New York luxury. Honestly. I know it's really it's really great and I've definitely gotten way too used to it. I mean, it's actually a pretty decent space um, relative to the apartment so Sometimes I'll just like close the door when I'm in here and pretend that there's like a much bigger space out there. It's cute, it's well finished. They're painting things in here with like more neutral colors, but they actually like surprisingly match, so I like that. It's a pretty solid bathroom for the apartment. Here's the bedroom, and one thing I really liked about my bedroom is that it has this glass door because it's a pretty small space. Um, so it's nice like when you're looking in. It's a pretty small bedroom, but you know, we got some high ceilings, so it helps it out for sure. Pretty much in here is just like a bed, and that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just have like a bed, nightstands, I went with like cool kind of tones for my bed to make it like more peaceful and relaxing. And then I've got this big Greenpeace poster, which is kind of funny considering the Jaws in the other room, but you know, different space, different personality. Uh, I just took this from my parents, it was from like the 80s or something, and Kind of funny because I noticed it's in like the background of a classroom in the movie Clueless and I secretly really like that. So this is like the main closet. I'm not going to open it up because it's kind of like the cheaper by the dozen closet where everything will just like burst out and I'll probably fly into the street. We got some good storage space up here which is like a big bonus having high ceilings that you can kind of find places that have this kind of stuff. So you can put like suitcases or boxes or like random junk up there. I hung this up, my grandma did this back in the 80s. I feel like everything taken from home is from the 80s for some reason. But uh, it's just like a little drawing of a uh, nude woman and I thought the colors were really good since the walls are gray. Just, you know, sticking with those like neutral tones for like a lot of the space. Biggest tip for living in a small space is either buying or bringing furniture that is actually like small and fits the space. I, even though it's not like the biggest comfiest couch, like I got a smaller couch to kind of fit and like chairs that are like lighter and metal so that like there's not too much like heavy wood and stuff like that. Um, because I think like that kind of opens up the space more. Yeah, it's not the most comfortable thing all the time, but you're also like you should already know you're making that sacrifice when you're getting a smaller space. Living in New York is obviously going to be expensive, and especially when you're living kind of in this neighborhood and you're living alone. Growing up uh, just like a couple hours from the city, it's really nice to be close to my family. And I also went to NYU, so it was kind of a natural progression for me. And working in the space that I do, the main markets are New York and San Francisco. So I wanted to stay on the East Coast, and I think just living in New York, you have access to so many different people. We talk about all these different neighborhoods and their different characters and I think the funniest thing is like you're really like within like half a mile of each of these places so you get like the city within cities having friends that kind of live in every different area like you get to like experience like New York in a different way each time so you you gain a lot from living here and I think just your exposure to different cultures different people from different backgrounds all of that really contributes to a really cool place to live and grow up when you're, you know, in your 20s. So one thing that was really important to me actually was living alone because I feel like in New York you can get just like, you know, pulled in every direction. You're always around people. Um, so for me it was very important to have a space that was just to myself. If I want to be social, like, I can leave my apartment um, or I can invite people over. Uh, so it's really nice to have that sense of autonomy and also have that private space for yourself. New York's definitely not for everyone. You kind of have to be like a go-getter. You have to be okay with having that time by yourself. Um, it's definitely a hard place to live um, at first if you don't have a big community of people already here. 
but I think before you know it, you can kind of like build that. You'll have like that core group, which is what really keeps you grounded when you're surrounded by millions of people every day. So I moved over to the West Village a couple years ago and I really liked it because I felt like going to school in New York and always spending time in the East Village, you can kind of get that like younger college -y vibe, which is really fun older and also like just like a different assortment of restaurants and more of like this kind of neighborhoody feel. Every neighborhood has a different character to it and I'd say the West Village, it's a really interesting place because it's a good mix of like new and old. You have some older people who have lived here forever and then you also have like a lot of young professionals, but also like families as well because it is less trafficy and um, there are like all those like pretty brownstones and that kind of thing. I'd say it's definitely has a certain level of like peacefulness to it. I'd say one thing that's really great about the West Village is food. There's a lot of like really great cute restaurants and especially in today's times um, where they're like street dining is now kind of a permanent fixture of New York. Um, it creates this very quaint kind of like European almost feeling. It's very cozy. One of my favorite spots to go is Dante. There's there's two locations over here and they have like these really great Negronis that actually ended up on like the list of like best bars in the world, which actually was very upsetting because after it went on that list, it got super, super busy and was already kind of a crowded place. I feel like they do kind of like New York classic dining and like, especially now like outdoor dining, they do it like very well where you don't feel like you're just like kind of sitting out eating in the street. I think the West Village has like a lot of great spots, like whether it's restaurants or bars, they're definitely a bit more upscale neighborhoods and definitely not as trafficked. I think it creates this very like cute, quintessential like New York vibe that you see in like TV shows and that kind of thing. Um, so I really like that about it because you really feel like you're living in what you had kind of envisioned when you're living downtown in New York. Mm -hmm.